O oh God, be merciful to me, a sinner. Today's gospel is a very powerful gospel and many lessons that we could learn. And the church is trying to especially exalt the virtue of humility. In each liturgy, the readings are picked by the church for a certain reason, and they correspond to the liturgical season. But the readings dictate the grace that God wants to bestow upon all his faithful that come to the holy sacrifice of the Mass. And so today, without a doubt, is the virtue of humility and faith. St. Augustine, speaking on this gospel today, says, Because faith is given to the humble, not to the proud, he said to some who trusted in themselves as just and who despised others this parable. Two men went up to the temple to pray, and one a Pharisee and the other a publican. The former said, O oh God, I give thee thanks, that I am not as the rest of men. He should at least have said, as are many other men, what does the phrase, the rest of men, mean, if not all men except myself? I, he says, am the just man. The rest are all sinners. Do you not see how the presence near him of the publican is but an occasion of greater pride? As also is this publican, I, he says, am unique. He belongs to the rest. I, he says, am. I am nothing like this man because of my just works by which I am superior to all. St. Augustine goes on to say, But what did he petition God for? Nothing. Search his words and you will find nothing. He wished only to praise himself, as if it were not enough to ask God for anything, but only to praise himself. He also insults the other man present there. You could see the pride of this publican, how his prayer is so displeasing to God. He is a peacock. <laughs> he likes to show off his feathers. He likes to show off his virtues. Here is a man that is doing all the works that the scriptures told him and that the Lord told him to do. He fasted twice that week. Big deal. He prayed. He gave his money. He gave everything. He followed the law. And he comes before the Almighty. He comes into the temple filled with pride. And God despises that. And the, the poor publican who's sitting there, as we'll see, I'm going to go over him, with his head down, couldn't even look up to heaven. He's saying, look, thank God I'm not like him. Look at that. That man's a sinner. He didn't fast. He doesn't follow the law. And he looked down upon him. St. Augustine goes, now he speaks about, the, he goes, the publican was standing afar off, yet he was slowly drawn nearer to God, even though he was at a distance. His conscience held him afar off. His piety brought him closer. The Lord bent down to him from near at hand. Learn further of the humility of the publican. It matters little that he stood afar off, nor that he would not so much as lift up his eyes towards heaven. He did not look up so that he might be looked at. He did not dare to look up. Conscience pressed him down. Hope uplifted him. What an awesome example of this publican who acknowledges, I am a sinner. I am not worthy to look up to heaven. And God will never turn away a humble, contrite heart. And the more he prayed like that, the closer God came to him. God looked down upon him with favor. We better be paying attention to what St. Augustine is instructing us. I hope we're learning a lesson. I hope our prayer reflects the prayer of the publican.
And so St. Augustine says, and learn yet more about this man. He struck his breast. Okay, he, ex he ex exacted punishment on himself. And for this the Lord spared the sinner, confessing his sin. Hear how he prays, what wonder that God forgives him when he accuses himself in this matter. God will once again loves humility. When we sin, the first step is to acknowledge our sin. How many people come into confession so distressed because they sinned? And you know what I tell them? I said, what you really should be shocked about, my friends, is that you didn't offend God worse than you did. You should, uh, you should be shocked that you didn't fall ten times worse. That should be the real surprise. But for the grace of God goes I. But the publican realized his sins. He realized how offensive they were to God. And that brings God's mercy down upon us. St. Augustine goes on, he says, You have heard the case of the Pharisee and the publican. Now hear the sentence, the verdict from God. Amen, I say to you, this man went back home higher in God's favor than the other. Tell us, Lord, the grounds for this sentence. I see the publican goes down from the temple justified, not the Pharisee. But I want to know why. You want to know why? Hear why. Because everyone who exalts himself will be humble. And the man who humbles himself will be exalted. You have heard the sentence. Beware of the evil grounds for it. I shall put this in another way. You have heard the sentence. Beware of pride. Beware of pride. When the publican went home, he was justified, the scripture says. You know what that means? That he was in a state of grace. He was in friendship with God. His soul was alive. When the Pharisee went home, he wasn't justified. He wasn't in communion with God. And that's how God treats the prideful. My question is, how many Pharisees are in this church today? Believe me, they're here. They're in every church, just like those two men walked into the temple to worship God. But what did the Pharisee do? He praised himself. It's idolatry. He was worshiping himself. I'm so good. Look at my virtues. How many people come in that confessional and they start telling the priest their virtues? I do this for, I don't know. You're not here to tell me what good you're doing. You're here to tell me your sins. In other words, you're not humble. You're prideful. And you're not going to, and you wonder why you don't grow in grace and virtue. Because you will not humble yourself. Like the publican. How many come in the confessional with attitudes? And when father wants to give advice, they're not open to it. They get arrogant because they are Pharisees. This is sad, my friends. The church is infected with Pharisees. The traditional movement, especially my friends, are, is infected. The number one sin Pride. Bunch of Pharisees. How many people I meet throughout the country, I preach missions all over, and some of them tell me, you know, Father, the Trinity Mass is beautiful, but I cannot stand those people. They are self-righteous. They criticize me. They tell me how I should dress, how I should talk, how I should walk. How many traditionalists say, Oh, well, well, thank God we're not like those people in the Nova Soto. Shame on you. And they're here today. Many of those people far exceed you in the virtue of charity. And I tell traditionalists, you will be judged much more severely than those people. Because you've been given more. You've been given the truth. How come you're not growing in charity? How come you're always looking at your neighbor? How come she doesn't homeschool? Shame on you. You better wake up, my friends, because you will be cast down if you're in that situation like the Pharisee. 
How come they don't do this? How come? Keep your eyes off of the other families and keep your eyes on your own family. All, your, all the saints tell you, if you're going to be hard, be hard on yourself. How many people in the traditional movement, the Pharisees in the traditional movement, correct the priest? They know better than Father. I get fed up with this after a while. They're not open for correction, but they want to give correction to the priest, who is put over them by God. The priest receives his authority from above, from God, the bishop, to the priest. But how many in the traditional movement want to correct father? Because he didn't, he missed the rubric. And you know, someone is people, I said, I, I, I questioned, I said, I want to know the Ten Commandments in order right away. They can't even do that. And you're going to correct me or any other priest. Shame on you. Wake up. The traditional movement is very prevalent, this disease. And that's why it's not being blessed. And that's why it doesn't s spread as much as it does. If we had humility, if we had charity, this place would be packed. The bishop would give you your own church because of your prayers. Because when your prayers are humble, God will answer them. But we're not humble, so we deserve to be kind of in exile. Let us pray for humility. St. Augustine says, if you see defects in your neighbor, you know what he says? Exercise the opposite virtue yourself, and then you will finally be free of that defect. <laughs> you know what he's saying? In other words, what you always see that you don't like in your neighbor, you are guilty of. That's why it bothers you so much. Keep your eyes on yourself. Keep your eyes on Jesus Christ, and you will be set free. Another great saint, one of my favorite doctors, St. John Christendom, I quote him. He has some great advice for us today. He says, do not let us give way to pride. On the contrary, let us call ourselves useless in order to become useful. How many here consider themselves useless? He goes on. If you say that you are worthy of praise, you will only make yourself worthy of blame even though you merit praises. If you call yourself useless, you will be useful, even though you merit, you merit censure. For that reason, it is very necessary that we should forget our good works. But how can I forget what I know to be true? When you offend God, you live quite tranquilly. And you laugh without thinking of your sins and forgetting everything. And cannot you forget your good works? Even when we should have been in a state of great fear because of our daily sins, we forget them. Yet you give a small alms to a poor man. And you are always thinking about it, which is a great stupidity and very bad for the person who indulges in it. The best way of keeping them quite safe is to forget our good works. When we walk through the streets showing off our clothes and jewels, we only awaken the interest of thieves, but they are quite safe if we guard them at home. Do not remember them very often, the good works. Unless someone should rob you, as happened to the Pharisee, who had them always upon the tip of his tongue. And for that reason, the devil, the devil stole them from him. Even when you do remember them, give grateful thanks to God and offer them to him. The end of quote. He's trying to instruct us in humility. It's a great quote. Don't focus on your good works. Forget about them. Like he said, because otherwise, like the Pharisee, you leave here an unjust man. And you will be robbed of all your merits by Satan. And so i like to just go over three attitudes of the humble person. And we should pray for these attitudes. 
three attitudes. Number one, with regard to God. To glorify God, give Him thanks, and to do His will in all things. We should all strive for that more than anything. If we just do this one thing, to glorify Him, give Him thanks, and do His will in all things, this would be heaven on earth. The second is that all goodness has been sent to us from God. Therefore, he does not, the sinner does not rely on himself, nor count on himself for anything. For anything. The publican didn't even acknowledge the gifts he had were from God. And that is not good. Everything we have is from God. I went over that two weeks ago as the stewards. And we will have to answer for this. But we should attribute everything good to God and thank Him for it. The second attitude is with regard to others. He sees in others the perfection of God, that divine side of our neighbor so often obscured. Thus is born in Him charity and respect. He considers others superior to Himself. It is easy for the humble man to consider others as his superior because in them he sees the works of God while in himself he sees his own sins and imperfections. He thinks that in others there is much hidden good which puts them above him. This is so awesome. This is the attitude of a humble man. He sees God in his neighbor. And therefore, he humbles himself, and he puts himself below. Jesus Christ himself, the Son of God, he said, I did not come to be served, but to serve. Why do we have such a problem being servants then? Why? Because we're prideful. Because we're like the Pharisee. And the third attitude is with regard to himself. The humble man knows the good which is in himself, but he does not glory in it, except in so far as it comes from God. He knows the dangers of pride. Therefore, the higher he finds himself, the more he cultivates this humility and abandonment to God, who gave him all these things. His gifts are talents, which he must use for God, to whom he must give a strict account of the use he has made of them. Even his progress in holiness seems relative to him, little in comparison with the favors received. Let us pray that we all cultivate this great virtue of humility. We see this in the lives of the saints. My Holy Father, Saint Francis, St. Francis considered himself the worst sinner in the world. He said that if God would have bestowed upon anybody else the extraordinary graces he gave to him, they would be much, much better than him. St. Francis didn't even think he was going to make heaven so many times. He was humble. And when he died, the friars, some of them had visions of him going shooting right up to heaven and the angels are having a debate. Who is it? Some said it's Francis. Others say, no, it's Christ. No, Francis. He was so Christ-like that he was totally one with Christ. And therefore they say that he received the seat that Lucifer lost. Lucifer was the greatest angel God created. He had more gifts than all the other angels. He was the most beautiful. But he was filled with pride and he fell. And so that highest seat that was reserved for him was given to the most humble man on earth, Francis. We see another great son of St. Francis, St. John Capistrano, who was a reformer in the Franciscan order. But St. John Capistrano was a great lawyer and he was prideful. He's a smart man, very intelligent. And so I, there was a feud between two towns, and he was trying to reconcile them. And he ended up becoming a prisoner, and they locked him up in a prison. And he tried to escape, and he just back and forth. Finally, our Lord converted him in the prison. 
He had this massive conversion. And he was humble. He was no longer a prideful man. And so when he was set free, you know what this man did? He came down, he took a dunce cap, a long hat, and he wrote all his sins, all his sins on that hat in big enough letters where everyone could see. And he got on a jackass sitting backwards, and he rode through his town and the towns where people knew him and where he was a prideful man so everyone could see him and mock him and laughed at him. But he humbled himself, and God exalted him. He was a great, great saint did many, many miracles. We see this in the life of St. Pio. What a great saint. St. Pio thought he was going to hell. What I say before, the more gifts that St. Pio had, the more he humbled himself. Because he knew they were not his, they were God's gift, and they were used to be used for his kingdom. Let us look to these great saints. St. Catherine of Siena, the great Dominican mystic, she said when the devil would attack her, which he would do many times, the only thing that would make the devil flee was she would make an act of humility. And she said the minute she humbled herself, the devil would flee. He hates and despises humility. He can't stand near a person who's filled with humility. So if you're being tempted, my friends, humble yourself. That's why some people, the saints, for instance, tell you, if you have a wicked habit, God forbid, a blaspheme, blaspheme in God, it's one of the worst sins you could commit. You know how you get healed of that sin? St. Alphonse says, you drop down to your knees, no matter where you are, and you make the sign of the cross three times and honor the Holy Trinity, whether there's mud, dirt, whatever there is, and you will be healed. Why? Because you humble yourself. So we need this virtue of humility desperately. It is the foundation of all other virtues. If you do not have humility, you have nothing. You cannot have any other virtues without humility. You cannot be filled with charity unless you're truly humble. And so how do we acquire this virtue? Number one, we have to beg God for it every day of our life. Pray for the virtue of humility. But you must also pray for the grace to accept the humiliations. Because the only way one becomes humble is to humiliate themselves. But God will send you humiliations because the ones that he chooses are much more purifying. They sting a lot more than the ones that we pick. And so pray for your humility, but pray to accept these humiliations, even with joy. To be resigned when they come. To thank God. Those are the greatest gifts. Look at our Lord, the humiliations that he suffered throughout his whole life. Throughout his whole life. He was God. And there are two virtues mainly that our Lord mentions in the scripture. Imitate me, for I am meek and humble of heart. Meekness, turn the other cheek. But when you're prideful, you can't turn the other cheek because you're constantly saying, how dare this person assault me? How dare this person say those wicked words about me? You know what St. John Vianney said? There was priests that wrote to the bishop and the bishop showed him the letter. This man is a horrible priest. He should be removed from his parish. And so when John Vianney saw that, you know what he said? Oh, yes, bishop, it's true. You should remove me. He said, if they only knew who I was, they would say a lot worse. St. John Vianney. And you know what? St. John Vianney is so humble, the demon hated him. One time there was a possessed man, and St. John Vianney had a letter from his bishop to exorcise this man, to deliver him. So the demon started manifesting, and St. John Vianney he didn't have time to waste. He said, look, I have the permission from the bishop to exercise you and to cast you out of this man. Save yourself a lot of pain and leave now or you're going to be tortured. <laughs> and what happened? The demon fled. The man was delivered instantly because of his humility. Because of his humility. What a great saint. St. John Vianney, everybody, the devil came once and told him, if there was three priests like you 
in the world at once. I would be ruined. It would be over. And I didn't know, you know, everybody interprets that one way until I, I, years ago, this exorcist that I know said, you know what he was doing at St. John Vianney? He was tempting him to pride. Oh, if there was just three like you, I'd be done. Pride. Let us pray to the Immaculate. The devil hates her more than anything. Because it's her, through her obedience, through her humility, that his head is crushed. Go, run to the Immaculate. She was the humble handmaid of the Lord in the Magnificat. He cast down the mighty from their throne. He lifts up the lowly. What did Our Lady do in her life that was so extraordinary? Tell me. Nothing. As far as the world looks at things. She was a humble housewife. She was a humble mother. She swept the floor. She cleaned the house. She cooked. She cleaned. She was humble. She was the mother of God. She could have said, no, send the angels. I'm not doing it. I don't want to clean today. Angels she would have listened to her. She's a queen of heaven and earth. Are you above the mother of God? That's why those feminists are so miserable. They're miserable wretches, every last one of them. Because they won't humble themselves. They won't. And they're meant to imitate the mother of God. And when they do, they'll be filled with joy. And the devil will flee. Let us pray as we go to Calvary. And especially at the Mass that graces are distributed to us. Let us pray that we will we pray every day for the virtue of humility. That we will meditate on our Lord's life, the Blessed Virgin's life. And the saints, always have a book of one of the saints, a biography at your bed. Always read at least one chapter, one paragraph from some saint. Because the saints are going to challenge you. And you see their humility constantly. You go on and I say, Gerard Magella. He was accused falsely. Some woman accused him of a horrible crime. He remained silent, didn't defend himself. And his superior, another great Saint Alphonse, he had a, basically locked him up. And then when Saint Alphonse found out that he was innocent, he wept. He did what he was supposed to do, but he wouldn't defend himself. Humility, my friends. Let us pray for each other. Let us pray for the traditional community, not only here, but throughout the whole country and the whole church. That if we do become humble, that if we do imitate Christ, that if we start acting like Christ, we will win many people to his church. We will be filled with not only humility, but with charity. We should want our brothers to be reunited, those that are separated. We should want all Protestants to convert so that they can save their soul. There's no salvation outside the church. But you will not convert no one without humility and charity. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen.